Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 39. In this training tutorial, we're going to be focusing on our cranking fuel and our post-art and warm-up enrichment fuel and how all those fit together and how we need to go and set these tables up so we can fire up our engine and have a proper fueling delivery so the engine's going to run as it's coming up to operating temperature. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our startup fueling for our Haltech Elite systems using our NSP software. The startup fueling is actually really simple to dial in and to work with, but we need to understand the order of operations we're going to be working through and how everything is going to be applying itself so we can very clearly see what we have to go in and change and update if we're not getting the proper cranking, firing up of our engine, and the fueling delivery during the transition period between the time we fired it off and the engine's warming up and coming up to operating temperature, or even firing off the engine hot. So we have a lot of little details here to cover. Let's dig in here and let's talk about how this is all going to work and how it's all going to be interconnected. Now I'm working within my page here called Startup Fuel. This is something I provided in the training course folder. Um, you can load the page if you don't have this in your layout by going to add new page, going here to load from file, and then going into our course layout to be able to go ahead and load that. So I've already done that. I don't need to go ahead and do anything further for loading it, and you should have this page located on your NSP screen right now to follow along. Okay, so taking a look here, we have a couple different tables to work with and to understand what's going on. We have our prime pulse table, we have our fuel cranking table, we have our fuel post start correction table, and then we have our fuel coolant temp correction table included with this we also have the target lambda and the target lambda coolant correction table. All of these work together in unison to allow the engine to fire up cold or warm and have successful cranking to firing. We don't want to find it takes 20 cranks to fire off the engine. We don't want to find that if we fire off the engine, it cranks up, fires up, and dies. We don't want to go and crank up the engine, have it fire up, and run extremely rich up to the point where we get up to operating temperature. So there's definite things we need to know here in order to go after where the actual problem lies. And what I have down here in terms of my logging channels and the tables that I have laid out here, this is all you're going to need to access in order to understand this process of what we need to edit and what we need to change if we're not getting successful results for getting our engine to crank up and fire. So before we dig into the tables and understanding the values in the tables here, let's just talk about fundamentally what's going on and understanding the order of operations. I find that's the easiest way to understand how the workflow or the flow of logic here is going within how our injector is being pulsed and opened and the fuel is being delivered to the engine. So let's break this down just fundamentally. And this will be pretty much for any standalone system and this will even be applicable to OEM ECUs. So the way that OEM manufacturers are programming and working with tables like this. So what we're gonna find here is coming up on screen, I have a nice graphical plot that's going to show the order of operations and the flow of logic here. So the first thing we're gonna find is that we have what's known as our prime pulse table. The prime pulse table is used for the first cranking revolution of the engine. So as soon as the Haltech sees the engine RPM start to pick up and register a full sweep of cranking revolution, it will pulse the fuel at a higher amount for that very brief period of time. And it does this because the engine at that point has no airflow coming into the engine the combustion chamber is going to be dry. So if we go in and put a big shot of fuel into the engine, it'll aid in getting it to start up a little bit quicker. That's the idea behind a prime pulse table. All right, so now that the engine has cranked for a revolution, it's going to be going into its normal cranking mode and we're entering what's known as our fuel cranking table. This is going to be what provides the injector pulse width under that steady state cranking condition in order to give the fuel for it to fire off. Now ideally we want to crank and fire up in less than a second so it won't spend much time in our fuel cranking table if everything's configured right. Now once the engine's actually fired up and it's running, which there's going to be a threshold which we'll talk about here in the programming, that threshold between um, cranking mode to run mode is typically about 350 RPM, although we can set that to whatever we like, but that's typically what the default's going to be in all the Haltech files. So once we've exceeded 350 RPM approximately, it'll consider the engine to be in the engine run state. It's now going to enter our fuel post start correction as well as our fuel coolant temp correction, otherwise known as a warm up enrichment table. So we have these two tables being applied to each other. Now, when the engine actually 
goes above that cranking threshold and it's considered to be in the runtime. An engine timer runtime timer starts. It's going to start off at zero seconds. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.